this guy is really good. He's not a guy, he's a machine. What are they gonna do, replace us? Challenge accepted. So here we go with a Robocop build. This starts off as a Pepicure file. These files are from Bro Navarro. They are by far the most accurate 1987 Robocop Pepicure files I can find. So make sure you go check him out. These were printed out onto paper, cut out, and then those parts were traced round onto 10 mil thick EVA foam. This video will show you how to use these Pepicure files to make the Robocop helmet. Uh, you can use these same skills to do the rest of the suit as you will see at the end of the video. So when cutting out these parts, it's important to use a really sharp knife as the neater your cuts are, the more tidy your seams are going to be. You can glue these bits of EVA foam together using anything you like from contact adhesive, super glue or my favourite hot glue. A lot of this build calls for the foam to be curved before it's glued together and to get it to curve you use a heat gun and heat it from the back that way you don't risk burning the surface you're going to later paint. You can't use a hair dryer for this because they just don't get up the temperature so a heat gun is essential for any foam work that requires the foam to be curved. Now what I'm doing with these two pieces here after heat forming them this is the dome of the helmet is on taping up the entire seam from the outside making sure it's perfectly lined up before going at it on the inside with my glue gun to glue the two pieces together now as you can see this top part doesn't line up perfectly with the bit it's going to attach to so heat form the bottom edge of this and then hold it firmly onto something flat i'll use this piece of wood but you could also use your table just not your cutting mat because the heat will warp it just hold it till it's cooled down and that should line up a lot better. When gluing on big pieces like this, it's difficult to get it lined up perfectly. So I always do a little bit at the front and then get it lined up and do a little bit at the back and then fill in the rest. It is quite tricky, but with this glue gun, it's got quite a thin nozzle on it so I can get that right in the gap and make sure I get it even on both sides, otherwise it'll be crooked. If you don't want to keep wasting money on replacement blades, then make sure you buy yourself a knife sharpener. That will keep your knife nice and sharp and will prolong the life of the blades. This part was cut slightly oversized. That's so I could cut out a recessed bit around the edge so that this part can slot underneath the back of the helmet. I did the same thing with the chin guard. This was made slightly taller than the Pepicure file. Uh, that's so I can cut this down to half its thickness so it can slot in to the side of the helmet. Cutting out the eye hole was quite tricky but not as difficult as thinning down the foam so that way the visor doesn't sit so far back. I should have done this before I assembled it. These ear pieces were cut out from the side of the helmet and then cut down to half their thickness before being glued back in. That's just so they are set back from the rest of the helmet. The chin guard was then permanently glued in place. It hasn't got a removable chin guard like in the movies. As this is made of flexible foam, I can get the helmet on and off with the chin guard still attached. Gluing on some more detail pieces to the ears. For the detail pieces that go on the lower part of the back of the head, I pin them all into position first. That way I can move them about if I'm not happy with where they are before I permanently glue them.
The detail lines on the side of the helmet I first score in with the back of a knife and then I make slightly wider with a very sharp pencil. I then do the same thing for the back of the helmet. And then the same again for the writing on the side of the helmet. The piece of paper you see there has the text OCP Police 001 and that's just so I can use that as a guide for spacing and sizing of the letters I'm going to draw on. So these detail lines that I have scored in with a knife and then made wider with a pencil are to give my wood burner a channel to follow. Because trying to do straight lines with something as big and bulky as a wood burner is quite difficult. But if you've already etched in a channel for the nib of this to follow, it becomes a lot easier. The only bits I didn't do with the wood burner is the writing because I think it looks good enough as is. So that is the helmet fully assembled. This back piece needs to be removable to fit your head in. This will be attached later on after it's all painted up. Now I made two of these helmets and that's because I wanted one clean and one battle damaged. Now if you don't want to battle damage yours then you can skip ahead a bit but if you do then get your wood burner out. So I marked off where I wanted the battle damage to be again with a pencil and then I used the wood burner to burn in some bullet holes. This is almost ready to paint, but before we do that, we need to seal the whole thing. And to do that, I just use a heat gun. When heat gunning, you want to be careful not to burn the foam. You can tell when you've done enough because the foam slightly changes color as the pores in the foam close up. It will also get slightly more shiny. On to painting. I'm using a scowl here to make sure that I get the ratios of my paint the same in case I run out. I mix in black and silver here to get a slightly darker shade of silver. And I'm just gonna apply this with a brush. This would have been way quicker to spray paint this, but painting this with a brush means I could do it in my living room. So this is after one coat of that silver paint. Now it's time to use some of this decorator's cork. And I use this just to fill in the seams, mainly around the dome of the helmet. Just apply this with your finger and then use some water to smooth it out. So that's the seams all filled. We can now go over the whole thing with a second coat of paint. So when the silver's fully dry, I watered down some blue acrylic paint and put it through my airbrush to add some blue highlights. I used various reference pictures and my 18 inch Necker Robocop figure as a point of reference. I then did the same thing with some purple. I then used some black acrylic paint to paint the chin guard.
and then using very little black paint on a smaller brush I just dry brushed outwards from the bullet holes Now that it's all painted, the only thing left to do is to cover the whole thing with clear lacquer. For the actual visor of the helmet, I use these welding visors. These are the exact same ones I use for my Mandalorian helmet. Uh, they look black, but they're actually, in fact, very, very dark green. But you can't tell, so they are perfect. I cut a strip of this using some snips and then trimmed it to the correct length. This is oversized compared to the eye hole in the helmet that's because it's going to fit into that channel we cut away earlier as I'm battle damaging mine I need to cut a hole in the visor where a bullet from Ed 209 has struck it which will reveal the wearer's eye underneath I drilled a load of little holes with my drill and then used a file to try and smooth that out The visor was then glued in place with hot glue from the inside and as it's oversized means that the glue won't run down past the bit that you're going to look through. I'm using a rasp file here to rough up the textured side on the inside of the helmet that is to make the hot glue stick better when adding this velcro. This is two inch elastic and this is glued to the inside of the flappy bit on the back of the helmet and the actual helmet itself. And that's to make sure that this part on the back is always lined up correctly. This Velcro is glued to the bottom edge of that flappy back bit and to the inside of the helmet too, and that's just to keep it closed. And that is the helmet complete. I then used those exact same skills to do the rest of the suit. This is me test fitting some of the parts, making sure they all line up correctly and seeing what my range of motion is like. For the gloves, I sectioned off the pieces and attach them to a glove. That way I get more movement in my hand, which is crucial as I need to be able to grip Robocop's gun. Speaking of the gun, I did have a 3D printed one, but I was scared that if I dropped it, it would break. So I opted to make one out of foam instead. All the parts were then painted in the same way as the helmet. Time to suit up. First bit that goes on is the cod piece, and this has got some straps that go over your shoulders to hold this up. The ab section of this is attached via elastic straps as well to give me some flexibility. What you saw me clip on there was a suspender belt type arrangement, and that's to hold up the thighs. The thighs themselves are attached to the calves with some strips of Velcro. And as you can see, I've added the Achilles tendon type thing to the back of the calf and not attached to the foot. That's just to make getting the costume on and off a lot easier. Inside the top of the thighs are buckles that attach to that suspender belt thing and then the feet just slide on like slippers.
The neck is the next piece to go on. That just attaches with some Velcro. And then the torso undoes on the sides. And that just slides on over and the neck just pops in the top. After the body and the head is on, it gets a bit tricky because my range of motion is now a bit limited. I can barely get my arms across my chest. Getting the arms on is a bit of a pain. You have to kind of wiggle yourself into them. The only bit I had help with getting dressed was to put the gloves on and that's only because I wanted them tucked into the forearms so my son helped me do this but if I just glued the gloves into the forearms then I'll be able to get those on on my own. So here I am all suited up, part man, part foam, all awesome. So as I said at the start of the video I had to scale up some parts. I was worried at first that he had looked like he had eaten too many donuts but as it turns out he's still got a big chest and a small waist so it looks big and powerful, which is fine with me. Shameless plug here, that is my Ed 209. Make sure you go check out the other videos I've got on my channel on how I made him. As well as a battle damage helmet, I also made a battle damage chest. This is interchangeable with the clean one with some Velcro up at the shoulders and under the arms. So there you go, challenge complete, Robocop done. And this has been a very long time in the making. I've wanted to be Robocop since I was about five years old, since seeing that film for the first time when I was a little kid. I've always wanted my own Robocop suit. I've stopped and started this project many times and now I've finally finished it. Well, I say finished it, there's a couple of things I wanna add. I wanna add the iconic footstep sounds to the costume. So every time I take a step, it'll make that thumping noise as a as Robocop's walking along, and also Robocop costume wouldn't be complete without a working thigh holster. Now, I've made my suit slightly oversized for two reasons. One, I'm a bit bigger than Peter Weller was in the original film, so I have to bulk it up substantially, so it's more like Swalbocop than Robocop, but still looks pretty cool. And two, I've added a little bit extra width to the thighs to make the gun fit in there. The gun does fit in the thigh, but I'm yet to add the mechanism to make it open and close and that's going to be something I'm going to undertake in the next couple of months so make sure you subscribe follow like all that stuff to keep an eye out for when I do that so yeah that's it and remember you don't have to be great at making to make something great goodbye